the libertarian view on foreign policy? What's the libertarian view on violence? Can, are we pacifists? Do we say you never use violence? No, we're not pacifists, although some libertarians are, but you need not be. You can engage in defense. If somebody comes at you, you can shoot them. If they come at you with a knife and you know they're getting close, you shoot them. And you're the uh, righteous person, because they're a threat to you. So libertarians are for a strong defense, but not an offense. We're not in favor of imperialist wars. We're in favor of defensive wars. Look, right now the US has a military budget bigger than the next 14 countries put together, all their military budgets. And they call that defense. We have 100 military, uh, 1,000 military bases in 130 different countries. Anytime there's a debate between two clans, we're in the middle of it because we've got military there. Suppose Indonesia or Brazil or the Mars had uh, uh, a thousand military bases in 130 different countries, and they said, well, we just have to protect the Brazilian interests. It's just defense. And the, and the Brazilian soldiers are walking down the street with tanks. We wouldn't think this is defense. But the idea to put ourselves in the other person's shoes, like with the Golden Rule, is anathema to the Republican Party. Not anathema to Ron Paul. Ron Paul looks at this and says, well, this is not uh, defense, this is offense. You know, we just had the NBA uh, finals between, what was it, uh, Oklahoma City and um, uh, Miami. Yes. Mm -hmm. And every time the other team has the ball when you're at the, uh, the, the visiting team, what are the fans yelling? Defense, defense, defense. Namely, they can distinguish between defense and offense. They don't yell defense when their own team's got the ball. Right? And they're not the brightest of people, the average guy who goes to watch a basketball game. They're not scholars. But they can distinguish between defense and offense in a way that the Republicans and Democrats can't. They have the audacity to tell us that what we're now doing is defense. Where if any other country did it, we'd know easily that it wasn't defense, it was offense. So Ron Paul doesn't want to, he's not a pacifist. He doesn't want to have other countries attack us. He doesn't want us to be weak. He just doesn't want us to be the policemen of the world. Who appointed us policemen of the world? Why should we? Pax Americana? Let's get back to George Washington and John Quincy Adams. Don't look for uh, goblins abroad to defend uh, peace and prosperity, goodwill with all people. And they say, well, he's an isolationist. He's not an isolationist. He, he, he wants to have free trade with people in the way that Obama and Romney don't. Okay, I picked the, the three uh, things. I've been at it for almost an hour. I've got a few other things that I want to do, and then I want to have time for questions on the long discussion. Another one that really bugs me as a, a, Jew, a Jewish person is uh, the charge of anti-Semitism. Ron is an anti-Semitist. By the way, who are his two mentors? Who are the two people that he looks up most, who he reveres? Ludwig von Mises and Murray Rothbard. Guess which ethnicity they are. I'll give you one guess. Yes, Jews. They're Jews. Now, what kind of a neo-Nazi says, yeah, I'm a neo-Nazi, but I love Jews? <laughs> you know, it's not right. He, he reveres Murray Rothbard and Ludwig von Mises. He's forever talking about them. I uh, was very lucky. I met Tom Nash, who's over there. I'll take a picture of Tom Nash oh. right now. <laughs> he is a co-president of Jews for Ron Paul, along with Rafi Barber. Yeah. I was the chief instigator of this. We had this group called Jews for Ron Paul. I don't know how many people we got, maybe 150, 200, something like that, who are Jews who say that Ron Paul is not an anti-Semite. The very opposite. But wait, he's against foreign aid to Israel. I mean, you have to mention it. Well, yeah, he is against foreign aid to Israel. But does he pick Israel out alone and say, well, Israeli, we're not giving you foreign aid, we're going to give everyone else foreign aid? No. Ron Paul is against foreign aid on many grounds. One, foreign policy, because he thinks we shouldn't have entanglements with other countries. Another, it's a form of welfare. And welfare doesn't help the poor, whether domestically or internationally. It just undermines uh, their initiative. So he's against foreign, po uh, against foreign aid for all countries, including Israel. But somehow for the New York Times, if you're against anything for Israel, even if you're against it for everybody, you're an anti semite 
look, the amount of money that we, our government, gives to uh, Israel is $3 billion a year, changes, it's something like $3 billion a year. You know what the amount of money that we give all the enemies of Israel all put together, the Arab countries, the Muslim countries, $12 billion? So we give $12 billion to Israel's enemies, and we give $3 billion to Israel, and we're pro-Israel? And Ron Paul says, well, let's take $3 billion away from Israel, and let's take $12 billion away from Israel's enemies, and he's anti-Israel? I mean, we're in the math building. This is the mathematics building. And the math is all wrong. If you, if you hurt the enemy of Israel by $12 billion and hurt Israel by only $3 billion, you're helping Israel. You're making it more rel relatively powerful compared to its enemy. You're not at all uh, undermining Israel. I've known Ron Paul for four decades, since the 1970s when he was involved in the gold stuff. And uh, I happen to have Judar, which is Jewish radar. It's not exactly gaydar. Gaydar is different. I, I thought it was the same thing, but I've been told by my gay uh, friends that this isn't right. Gaydar is 